Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and in this video today I want to give you a quick tour of Ubuntu GNOME 17.04. Now, so what's Ubuntu GNOME 17.04? Well, it's the latest release of the Ubuntu Linux operating system, but then not based on Ubuntu's own desktop environment, which is called Unity, but on a different desktop environment, which is called GNOME. And that's why this is called Ubuntu GNOME. Now, why am I interested in Ubuntu GNOME? The reason is simple. If you follow the news in Linux land, you've probably heard that uh, Ubuntu has decided to retire Unity, their own desktop environment. And as of next year, they will use GNOME by default. So that will become the default uh, operate, uh, desktop environment. Now, I've personally always been a Unity user. So I was interested in, uh, in seeing what the state of GNOME is, whether it's a use, usable uh, desktop environment, and also whether I can tweak GNOME to kind of look a little bit like Unity. And that's what I will show you in this video. And just to give you uh, my impression in advance, uh, I'm very impressed with uh, with GNOME and with Ubuntu GNOME. It really works very well. I would actually say it is where it is better than Unity. So uh, I don't think we have anything to worry about uh, when uh, uh, Ubuntu will change to using GNOME as a, as a default desktop environment. But please just watch the video and uh, judge by yourself. So if you start Ubuntu GNOME for the first time, you get a display that looks uh, like this. Very simple, very minimal, quite elegant, I think. And above all, very mobile. It really resembles the kind of desktop that you're used to from an Android phone or an iOS phone, or maybe even an Ubuntu touch phone, if you've ever used one. Now, uh, let's walk through the, the main elements of the desktop. So here on the right hand side, side we have the, the what you could call the indicators, which allow you to control the, the sound, the brightness of your display, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, location services. I'm not entirely sure what the location services do on a laptop without a GPS, but they, they are there, perhaps anticipating use on, uh, on devices that have GPS. Uh, your user account, right? I created an empty user account for the screencast and so on. Quite simple, straightforward, well-designed indicator uh, section. Now, then we have the clock in the center. Again, I think this, the fact that this clock is in the center gives it a very mobile uh, feel. If you click on the clock, you see that we have a, a calendar. Now, this calendar is pretty sweet. If you synchronize uh, your, if you synchronize GNOME uh, with your Google Calendar account, which you can do quite easily, there's an online accounts section that allows you to uh, to connect to your Google uh, Google services. You know what, I'm going to show you that real quick. If I click on settings, online accounts, here you can add your Google account, Facebook, etc., what have you. Now, say that you have added your Google account, uh, then your Google calendar appointments would appear here as notifications, your upcoming appointments, and here also in the calendar. That works quite well. Then we have a little weather section, and if you would have any kind of other notifications, they would also appear here. So this notification section really has the same kind of function that you would, that kind of the, the pull down, if you pull the, pull the top down on, a, on an Android phone, right? You also get your notifications and this is kind of the same thing. Pretty well designed, very, very mobile, uh, has a very mobile feel to it. Then on the left side, we have the activities uh, dash. If I click on it, uh, or if I just pull essentially my, my mouse to the top left, we get sort of an overview. And this overview has the favorite uh, favorite applications here and also the ones that are running. Right now Firefox is running and Simple Screen Recorder is running. If I wanna see all applications, I click on this. Up. There they are. And you get again a very Android-like overview of all your applications with, uh, with, your, uh, with, with icons. Now, if you, uh, it, it, right now I'm not using a touch screen, but I have used GNOME Shell on a touch screen and it actually works pretty well. It's quite nice. And here I can search, for example, right? Now, um, what we also have, if I remove the, uh, the, all the applications, here on the right hand side, we have all the, uh, all the virtual desktops. Now, um, GNOME has kind of an interesting way of managing virtual desktops by always keeping one desktop uh, empty. Um, so it removes, essentially, it removes em desktops if, if they are empty, except the last one. You just saw this happening, actually. You saw one desktop being removed. So there is always one empty desktop at the end. 
And if, for example, right now I'm at this last desktop and I start a program, for example, the file, uh, file browser, if I then show the activities overview again, you see that I've created a fourth desktop. If I go there and I start another window here, hop, you see that now there's a fifth desktop and so on. So we'll close all these. Hop, and you see it actually removes all these uh, extraneous desktops, right? So that we end up with only one empty desktop at the end. It's quite interesting. I'm personally used to having kind of a fixed two by two grid of virtual desktops. So for me, this takes some getting used to, but I can see the elegance in the way that uh, GNOME handles this. Now, um, so let's go back to, well, let me start the, the file manager again. Um, so if you're a traditional desktop user like me, used to, for example, using Unity on, uh, on Ubuntu or using KDE uh, on Kubuntu perhaps, or maybe even using the old fashioned GNOME 2, right? This is GNOME 3, but uh, before GNOME 3, there was obviously GNOME 2 and it was much more traditional, much less mobile focused. Now, if you are a traditional desktop user, you will probably miss a few things. And I will show you how you can uh, add them because GNOME is very extensible, so you can very easily customize it. Now, so one thing that you'll miss, I think, is the, the fact that there are no minimize and maximize buttons. There's just a close button, which is a bit strange. You can min maximize things by, for example, dra dragging it up. Uh, you can also do this kind of cool sort of sideways maximizing, right? Um, but you can actually not minimize things. Not I've not found any, any way by default to do that, which is strange. So that, that I don't really like that. Another thing that I don't really like is that you cannot see which applications are currently running. Well, you can see it, but you have to open the, 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 the activities overview and then you can see it. But otherwise you cannot see it. So what I'm going to do is add a, a panel here on the left side, kind of a traditional Unity-like panel, add the minimize and the maximize buttons, and then finally ch uh, choose a theme that I personally think is a little bit nicer. Um, just uh, for, for because I think it, this particular default GNOME theme is a little bit old fashioned. Now, so how can we do that? Well, very simple. We just go to a website called extensions.gnome.org and that has all the extensions obviously for GNOME. And the nice thing is that this website integrates with, uh, with GNOME itself. So Firefox integrates with GNOME and you can control your extensions to some extent anyway, from your browser, which is interesting. You see that in order to do that, I must install a browser extension for Firefox. Uh, so I'm going to do that by clicking here, install the GNOME Shell integration browser extension. That's a legit extension, nothing to worry about. So I say allow, okay, install, it has been installed. Then I reload up. And once I've reloaded, you see that this, you will see that this uh, message uh, has disappeared and now I can just browse all the extensions. And the one that I want to show you is called dash to uh, doc, dash to doc. There's another one called dash to panel, which is pretty sweet, uh, but I like dash to doc a little bit better. So what dash to doc does is it basically takes this, this doc that you see here in the activities overview and makes it permanent so that you can always see it. And in order to install it, it's really ridiculously simple. I just click here on, I toggle on. Uh, I, Gnome asks me if I want to install it. I say install and there we go. Now it's enabled. You might wonder why don't we see anything? Why, where is the, where is this uh, doc? Well, it is by default, it hides. So it's kind of right. If I minimize it, you see it avoids the full screen window. That's not really the kind of behavior that I like. So uh, I'm going to tweak this extension and I can do that by up, starting GNOME tweak tool, this one. And here, so basically GNOME tweak tool has a, has a bit more, a bit more settings that you don't have in the default settings menu. There, here there is a settings menu too, uh, but it's, well, it's quite limited. And the GNOME tweak tool is an extra application that allows you to customize GNOME in more detail. So I go to the extensions uh, section. Here you see dash to doc. Um, and it has, a, which I just installed, right? From, from Firefox, I click on settings and you can see, okay, the position is on the left, which I think I like. Uh, you can also put it at the bottom. Then you have more of a Windows or KDE, KDE feel, but I like it on the left. Intelli-hide is on. I don't like that. I want it fixed. 
and I would like to have it in panel mode so that it extends the whole, right? So now we actually get a get a layout that is very similar to uh, to uh, to what you might be used to from Unity. Okay, now there are a bunch of other extensions here uh, which you can browse. There are really many many extensions. Uh, one that I one that we're going to uh, need as well is this one, the user themes extension. Now the user themes extension. Uh, is necessary because it allows you to customize the way that uh, GNOME looks. Normally, you cannot really customize all aspects of GNOME. In order to be able to do that, you need to activate this user themes extension. So I'm going to do that. Now, once I've done that, uh, I actually need to restart the GNOME tweak tool. It doesn't give you any message uh, that you have to do that, but I found out uh, through trial and error. So I close the GNOME tweak tool and start it again, tweak up. There we are. And now here under appearance, I can change the appearance of GNOME. So under, so what do I got, what am I going to select? Well, here under GTK plus, those are the, that's the team that kind of controls uh, what this, what basically the, the applications look like. I write the default is Adwaita, and what I'm going to select is Adapta, which is kind of a, to me, a really sweet, uh, Android-like uh, team. Now, I've installed Adapta myself. You can do that here. Um, so if you Google Adapta GTK theme or something, you will find, for example, this, this page on, oh, oh my God, Ubuntu, uh, with some installation instructions of how you can install it. So I already did that, and that's why Adapta is in this menu for me. Under icons, the default icon theme is also called Adwaita. I particularly like this icon theme, Papyrus. So I select that, up, right? And again, a very simple, very elegant Android-like icon theme. I'm kind of into the, the Android look. So that's why I this is my personal bias. Um, Papyrus, again, needs to be installed separately. I've already done that. To install Papyrus, you can Google something like Papyrus icon theme. You will find this GitHub page. And on this GitHub page, you will... Um, you will find th these installation instructions uh, for how to install Papyrus. So Papyrus is credit where credit is due is based on another very good icon set, the paper icon set by, uh, by Sam Hewitt, really an incredible uh, icon designer. Okay, so now I've changed the, uh, I've changed the GTK theme. So the way that the applications look, the icons, so the icons here, for example, the cursor is fine, right? We don't, don't really care about styling the, the mouse cursor, I guess. Oh, there's only one option. The shell theme is the theme that controls this, this top panel. So right now, I think the top panel is a little bit of out of style, right? It doesn't really connect with the rest of the interface. So I select again, Adapta. Up. And now you see that the, the top panel really matches, uh, really is a very nice coherent part of the rest of the desktop. Um, yeah, so we're getting there, very nice. Now what we also wanted to do is activate the minimize and maximize buttons. So I go to windows uh, and then you can customize a whole bunch of things. But what I'm going to do is simply activate maximize and minimize. And there we are. Now we have minimize and maximize buttons because I really don't think it makes any kind of sense not to have those buttons, right? Certainly a minimize button, you just gotta have one. Okay, now as a final, uh, to kind of put the cherry uh, on top, I'm going to change the background to something that's a little bit more, uh, a little fancier. Actually, Ubuntu GNOME comes with a whole bunch of very, very pretty backgrounds. Uh, my personal favorite is this one. I don't know, just the, in terms of colors and stuff, I think it really connects very well to the rest of the team. Okay, so now now we have essentially a very good looking, very, very modern uh, desktop environment based on Ubuntu GNOME with all the, all the niceties, I would say, of Unity, namely, especially this sidebar, but also all the modern uh, tricks and tweaks that uh, GNOME Shell has, because GNOME is really a very, very good, very modern uh, desktop environment. Okay, thank you very much.